gloves. It's good time for a story from a long time ago. Long ago, but not too far from here. Up a ways along the California coast, in a stretch of land between the coastal range of mountains and the wide seaport city, there was a great rancho and a powerful ranchero who had many head of cattle in that land and had a lot of people working for him and his name was Senor Avaro. Now he had many head of cattle and much money that he always kept to himself. Now it happens, even as it still happens today, that oftentimes poor people from the countryside would decide to try a new life, go on a journey to the city, to have better fortune in the city. So oftentimes there would be poor travelers coming down from the mountains and the hills towards the great seaport city. And oftentimes they would come through this rancho looking for a place to sleep for the night and maybe for a meal so that they could continue their journey. So that the people of this rancho had a saying to any stranger coming their way. They would say to them, my friend, here you are going to find that it is much easier to drink from a tiny thimble than to try to drink from a giant cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> and what they meant by that was, my friend, in this place you're going to find more help and charity from the door of a poor man who may have very little to offer but will give it freely than you will get any kind of help from Senor Avaro, who had much and would never share. Now, it happened that there was one poor family on that rancho, Manuel and Maria. They had worked hard over the years to become independent, to live in their own way and make their own living. They had gotten themselves a cow, and the cow gave them milk, and then cream, and then butter, and then cheese, and from that cow they were able to make enough goods to trade in the market, to make enough money to own the land they lived on, and be independent. And so they lived together poorly, but happily, and any traveler that came to their door who needed shelter and food for the night would be warmly welcomed in, given a fine home-cooked little bit of a meal with some bread and cheese and a dry place to sit to sleep upon by the hearth. And then the next day that traveler would be sent on their way with good wishes for better fortune in their future. And so Manuel and Maria were happy together and in love together and in time their love blossomed and bore fruit and little Rosa was born to them. But a strange thing happened on the day that Rosa was born. The land began to tremble and shake. It's been known to do that in this part of the world from time to time. And when the earth quaked, the ground cracked. And up from the dry desert ground, there came a cool, clear spring of fresh water, fresh water to bathe the newborn baby, to grow a good garden, to share with their neighbors. And they saw that fresh spring of water on their land as a sign of good fortune for their new family. Ah, but Senor Avaro, saw that spring of water as a sign of much, much more. He thought, ah, those fools, they do not know the value of the water they have on their land. Water in this desert is so important. And yet they, they give it away freely to their neighbors. Bah. You know, if that were my land and that were my water, I would make people pay and pay dearly. I would make so much more money if that were mine, if it were mine, if it were mine. But it was not his. 
It belonged to Manuela Maria and Rosa, and they could do with it as they wished. But that did not stop Senor Avaro from trying to find a way to be rid of that family, to take possession of that land. And one day, he thought of a trick to try against Manuel. And so, when he knew Manuel would see him, Senor Avaro came walking by, counting out a great deal of money that he was holding in his hands. He was counting it out and stuffing it into his pockets. And indeed, Manuel saw him coming. He said, Senor Avaro, con mucho dinero, que pasa, huh? Hola, senor! Que tal? Ah, Manuel, how are you today? Not as well as you, I see. You've had some good fortune. What, this? This? <laughs> ah, my friend, this is just from doing good business. That's not good fortune. It's just being smart. I tell you, it's like this. You see, some time ago I was missing one of my cows. You know, I have so many, it's hard to keep track of them. <laughs> well, I searched and I searched, and finally, I found that cow. It had stumbled over the edge of a canyon and fallen into a rocky arroyo and had broken itself there and it was dead. And that was sad. But my friend, the first rule of business is waste not, want not. So right away I decided I would take that cow and from its leather hide, I would do something. I would make something of value so I could get the value for the cow I lost. Now. The people who live in the seaport city have a lot of money, and I know that they love to dress up and wear the latest fashion. Now, you've never been to the seaport city, have you? No, well, let me educate you. They are fools for fashion, and it just so happens that right now, huaraches are very popular. Everybody wants handmade sandals for their feet. They are so popular, why, <coughs> They're good as gold. Yeah. So I decided I would make huaraches. And I took them all from that one cow's hide. I took them all to the seaport city. I sold them all and look at all the money I made, huh? You see, I was right. Huaraches are as good as gold. <laughs> I tell you, my friend, if you want to be rich like me, be smart. Don't wait for good luck. Instead, do some good work. Take that one cow you've got. Huh? She's not worth much living anyway. Besides, she's not going to live forever. What are you going to do after that? Huh? If you take my advice, you would kill your cow. <coughs> and then you would take the leather, and you would cut and sew boraches and go to the seaport city while the people are so fond of them. And you could make as much money as I have. <laughs> ah, but why am I talking to you? You are a poor man. And everyone knows poor people are poor because they're lazy. Adios. <laughs> Manuel felt the sting of that insult. He knew how hard he worked and how little he had to show for it. He watched that rich man walking away, his pockets bulging with money. He thought, it's not fair. It's not fair that he should prosper while we go poor. Well, he thought about his family, how much he would love to be able to provide for them. Little Rosa, how many things he would love to give to her. And then he thought about all the people always going to the seaport city in order to make their fortune there. He'd never been, he'd only heard stories, but could it be true that people would spend so much money just for sandals on their feet? Could it be true? Could it be true? Yeah, it could be true. And then he thought, you know, that cow has really helped us to be independent, to have a life of our own, but she can't live forever. What would happen if I were to lose the cow? We'd be in very big trouble. Maybe, maybe I should. And so he did. He acted on the bad advice of Senor Avaro. He killed their cow, and now they had no milk or cream or butter or cheese, but he had the leather. And with that leather, he began to cut, sew, and work until he had made as many different sizes as possible of huaraches to sell in the seaport city with a dream of huaraches as good as gold. Now, when they were all done, he bound them up together into a big bundle. He put them onto his back, and he said goodbye to his family. He headed out early in the morning in the dark to make his way to the seaport city in order to sell his sandals and become a rich man, too. Now, the way traveled from the mountains to the sea was not easily traveled on foot, for there were winding paths, and there were steep canyons and dry river beds, and if you slipped and you fell, you would be lost and no one would know where. But Manuel was so full of hope for his good fortune that he stepped quickly and carefully and lively and he made his way to the seaport city. And there he was amazed. Oh, 
There was the great harbor and beyond the wide ocean. He had never seen such a sight. There were these huge boats rising and falling on the great swells. Their <coughs> sails billowing in the wind and the seabirds singing all about their decks. And then he looked to the city and there were these wide avenues coming from every direction and on all of the avenues so many people. There were carriages and caballeros and there were so many fine dressed people and so many tall buildings. He thought, oh, it's true. It's true all that I have heard. This is a place where I can make my fortune. So he found an avenue where there were many other peddlers just like himself offering their wares for sale. He put his guaraches down, he spread them out on the sidewalk, and he thought, I will be a rich man by noon. <laughs> and he offered up his sandals for sale. Hey! 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 But by noon, he'd sold none. He looked up and down the avenues, he saw that every now and then someone would stop and try to haggle with one of the peddlers and try to talk them down in price, cheap and cheaper. And by the end of the day, he managed to sell one pair of sandals for two bits. And when the sun sank on that day, something sank in that man, for now he realized what he had done. He had, he'd ruined his family. He'd killed their cow, and they had no milk or cream or butter or cheese. Now all he had was a, just a, a pile of quaraches. Quaraches well, as good as gold, as good as dirt. No one wanted these. How could he sell them? How could he ever get the value back that he lost from this cow? Oh, now he knew what had happened. Senor Avaro had tricked him and ruined him so that he would have to start again from scratch. He would have to move with his family and Senor Avaro with all his money and all his power could come and take over the land and take possession of all that he wanted. So sadly, Manuel bound together the unsold sandals, put them onto his back, and turned to head for home. Ay, but he thought of Rosa. He had wanted to bring so many wonderful presents back for her. He had those two bits. And so he gave them to one of his neighboring peddlers in order to buy a small present for Rosa. He bought for her a scarf. A scarf as red as rose. And he thought, I hope this helps to keep her warm in the cold days that are ahead for us now. And so sadly, with his burden on his back, he turned and he started to walk away from the city, back to his small home up in the mountains. Ah, but the wind that night came down hard and cold from the mountain peak. It chilled him so he felt like he could not make his way unless he could get warm somehow. And so he took the scarf he bought for Rosa and he put it on his own head. Ah, and that gave him some comfort. Ah, that helped him a little bit at least to cover his head, but still the wind whipped at his face and his chin. So he pulled his collar up about his face. Oh, ah. and with his bundle on his back, he walked against the wind. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> then he heard some laughter off in the distance. And then he saw a little sparkling light of a, a campfire. And there were some men standing around the campfire and they were laughing and they were eating. And he thought, maybe these men will be kind to me as I have been kind to travelers too. Maybe they will let me get warm by their fire and have a little something to eat so I can get the rest of the way home. And so he turned from his path and he walked towards that fire and he called as he walked, hey! <laughs> But what he could not tell was that standing by that fire were bandits, desert pirates, two-faced men who would offer a traveler a helping hand and then stab them in the back and take whatever thing of value they had to offer. They were cruel, murderous men. And they were laughing indeed as they stood by their fire about telling each other about all the evil things they'd done in their day. For there at their feet was all their pirates' plunder. All that they had taken so rudely and roughly from innocent travelers. There was cash and coins, jewels and gems glittering by the firelight. 
Oh, they were hard-hearted men used to a life of theft and murder. But you know, they say even the very hardest heart has a small spark of conscience at its core that knows it has done wrong. And maybe it was that little spark inside their hearts that lit a fire within them as they looked up from their camp and out into the night and they saw a strange figure approaching them on the winter wind. Hey, 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 I see something coming here. Stop it, stop it. What was it? I think I, I, think I see something moving out there. You see something more? Oh, yeah, look. There's a, there's a thing out there. He's walking around, but he don't got a head on it. He got a red bloody stump where and that's where its head's supposed to be. How can you walk around? You ain't got a head. You ain't, that's that not natural. You guys, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Got a big hump on its back too. I don't want to look at that thing. Yeah. Hey, you got some locos, huh? You don't know what you do. Oh yeah. What do you mean? What's that noise it's making? Waving that claw around and don't look real. I'm saying that on you. I don't like the look of that. No, I don't like it in there. Well, as they studied this strange figure that was walking across the night, they saw a monster, humpback, headless, a red bloody stump where its head ought to be, one clawed arm waving in the wind and a terrible moan coming from its belly straight towards them. <gasps> well, it was Manuel. <laughs> had Rosa's scarf on his head, his collar about his face, his bundle on his back, and he was calling out, But to these bandits, this was nothing less than a wreath, the monster of retribution sent to bring judgment on their head for the evil things they'd done in their day that they're not going to stay to hear what it had to say. They leapt up from their fire, they ran to escape. And the faster they ran, the faster ran Manuel. In their blind panic, those bandits had fallen over the edge of a canyon and disappeared into the stony base. Oh! Hey! Okay. And Manuel, losing sight of him, thought about that fire burning untended. He thought he'd better go back and wait for their return there. So he made his way back to the fire. He put down his burden. Oh, and at last he got himself good and warm in that cold desert night. Ah! Ah! <laughs> And that is when he saw it. All that pirate's plunder. For there by the fire he saw piles of cash and coins, jewels and gems glittering, gleaming in the light of the fire. And he thought, hmm. You know, if those men ever do come back, after all that running, I bet they needed new sandals for their feet. I'm, I'm sure they must have left this money out here as payment for me, so I could sell them. And so, Manuel left his paraches there by the fire for those men, if ever they should come back, you see. And he took as payment all that pirate's treasure. And so it was. That which had been roughly taken from innocent hands came gently back into innocent hands. And early the next morning, Manuel came happily home and he laid the treasure out before his family and he recounted the whole story of their good fortune. And as he was retelling his story to his family, who should come walking by but Senor Alvaro. Certain now that his trick had worked, he ruined the fool, the family would be gone. And Manuel saw him coming and said, Senor, come here, I want to talk to you. You lied to me. You told me that in the city, Huaraches were as good as gold. Hmm? It's not true. They're not as good as gold. They're much better. Look at all the money I made. Muchas gracias, muchísimas gracias, señor. Señor Abrosa, saw all the money that Manuel had brought back. He thought, hey, what, how, he, huh? <laughs> Wait a minute, it was a lie I told him. I tried to ruin him so that I could take over this 
place and yet he made sandals and went to the city and sold them and came back a richer man than I am? How could that be? Could it suddenly be that the people in the city are willing to spend so much money just for some sandals on their feet? Could it be? Could it be? It, it could be. And then he began to think, you know, if this one man with only one cow's worth of sandals could make so much money, think of how much more money I could make with all my cows. And so the trick turned on the trickster. And Senor Avaro went to his lands and took all his cows, slaughtered them all, tanned their hide, cut and sewed huaraches, put them into great carts, and took them off to the seaport city to make his greater fortune there. And nobody's seen or heard from him since. Nobody saw him ever again, but I suspect that justice was done in its way. Forever after that time, any poor traveler coming through that rancho who needed shelter and comfort for the night would be warmly welcomed into the fine cottage of Manuel and Maria and Rosa, and then they'd be given a hearty home-cooked meal and a nice soft feather bed to sleep upon for the night. And the next day that traveler would be sent on their way with good wishes for good fortune. And to be sure that they stayed on the safe path to good fortune, they would be wearing a new-made pair of huaraches. Huaraches, as good as gold.